The solution of uh, 2013 R2 is uh, a pretty straightforward uh, process. There's a few things that are a little different than what used to because uh, there's, uh, some of the components is not necessarily included in here. I won't install automatically. This one is a Windows 8.1. Uh, it's a final release of it. It's just downloaded from MSDN. Uh, right now, the DVD is getting uh, decompressed in here, and uh, this one is the installation CD of uh, 2013. It's a worldwide version. If I run the setup now, um, I'll actually uh, start this, and uh, I'll click Next, and install the demo up here. It will actually error out with uh, some missing component, and it will say OC setup. Exe is missing. What it actually is, is because as uh, manually needs to be installed a 2 or a 3.5.net. So uh, I'll go ahead and do that one. I'll turn this uh, .net 3.5 uh, on. And As it goes through and uh, look for that one, it will require to download them uh, from Windows Update. So the install of uh, 3.1 finished. If I look at it right now, it will have that uh, component installed. So we can now go back and run the NAV install. That's the only component manual needing to be installed. In there. So uh, else I will go through and on this computer uh, I will install the demo and it will install the component. I have not an office package but that actually is uh, okay. It's not uh, going to cause problems in here. You go through and uh, install all the prerequisites like the SQL Server and Report Viewer and things like that. So, the SQL Server uh, finished installing, and the rest of them is uh, quite fast compared to the first one at least. Last piece is the demo database that is being restored from uh, SQL Server, and it should be uh, ready. We look at the problems. The only problem I had was Outlook was not installed, and uh, that should be fine. So we now go look at it. The in AV 2013. I can see I have a development environment, I have administration, I have a new client, and I have an administration for So let's take a look at the new client here. Connects uh, to a service tier. And in a few seconds, uh, it will be uh, running as usual. Cronus International and uh, sales orders and everything looks uh, fine with the new uh, look for 2013 and The next thing is uh, if I want to install the web client, I would need to run the setup one more time. So let's just close this one and go run the setup one more time. I will remove or, or add a component and it will be the web server component. And as I click next, I can see the parameters for the web server component. It's a port number down here. So I'll go ahead and apply that one. And again, it warns me that Outlook is not installed. In this case, it's actually adding uh, the components automatically to uh, Windows. This one is installing an internet information server that is required for um, running the web client.
the Internet Information Server um, installed. And again, if I view problems, there's still only that the Outlook component on the system. So if I now open up the Internet Explorer, um, I'll go to uh, localhost and then port 8080. Uh, and if I go here, need to add HTTP and drum domain out here. So click enter. It gets this uh, comment that this site is a container. In earlier versions of 2013, it was possible just to open it. In this version, uh, it's necessary to put in the service tier to actually connect uh, to the web client. I get the Cronus warning in here, and uh, I will be inside uh, the web client. Looks very, very similar. This one supports uh, charts and all the other things that the Windows client actually is doing. So uh, let's close this one again, because another thing that used to be installed all the time is actually the online help. But the online help is now requiring a new online help server. So if I went in here to the sales order and went down to uh, the sales to customer number field, it's trying to open up the Internet Explorer on uh, this port number and the page don't exist anymore. So uh, to correct this one, we need to go and run the setup one more time and install the help server now also. So I will add another component. I'll add the help server. I want to run it from this computer. And if I look at it, uh, I have an option to configure both server name and port number. So it's not like you want to install this one on every computer. Um, you just want to install it on one computer at the company, and then everybody's going to use the same help network. I'll install it in here. Again, Outlook is the only component missing. It uh, installed the Internet Information Server, or at least check if it's installed, because we already installed it for the web client. And there's a lot of files here for the help server, so it takes a little while here at the end, uh, because it's uncompressing these 25,000 or more files uh, that is the current uh, NAV online help. One of the nice features about the help server is that it's now not compiled uh, files as it used to be. So it's actually possible for a company to go in and modify this one much easier than what it used to be. So the help server finished installing. And again, the Outlook component is missing, not that it's made a difference in any So Let's go see if the help works now. So we'll go back into NAV and we'll just try to uh, click this one. and the help server is now opening up the page and uh, it now running inside the browser um, for the online help. One of the real nice things about this one is that actually is also help for uh, the web clients. If I go in here and look at my sales order and I wanted to look at my sales order number, if I hover over the label up here, I have this little drop down and I can actually bring up the help uh, on this one. So the web client and the Windows client is now using exactly the same help. Uh, so that's a huge benefit. Before there was no help in the web client actually. Let's take a look at some of the functions in the development environment in here. So uh, let's open up the, de the development environment and uh, connect to the database in here. So I'll open my database and Windows login. The server is uh, NAT demo as it used to be, and the database is uh, 7.1. If I wanted to do a backup, as you normally do in here, it that has actually been removed in here. So the only option to do backup now is actually to do 
um, a SQL backup of the database. Another option that used to be in here is actually the option to create companies in here. That's actually don't exist uh, any longer here either and so on. Uh, those commands has now moved to the shell. So if I go in and uh, look at the NAV 2013 administration shell down here, that's where there's new command uh, commands to now deal with companies in here. So if I want to do an NAV, a new NAV company, that's one of the commands we have in here. So now it's possible to actually create a new NAV company. Yeah, let me just create one called Chrome's test. The first thing I will need to do is uh, hit the server instance, and the default is now called Dynamics NAV71. And the company name is um, Chronos Test. And uh, I actually get denied access. It's a little strange because it didn't really do any uh, check against the current security in the database but you have to be part of the administrator's uh, pool in here. So I'll have to exit this one and I'll go in and uh, run the administration shell again. But this time I'll have to run it as administrator down here. So I will new NAV company. And as you type below, you can actually hit tap in here and it will uh, fill out the value. And if there's only one, it didn't do anything if you tap more times, um, but if there's multiple one, it will actually loop through the different commands with the part you type. In. Same goes for the parameters. So I just type minus server or and I'll tap and it will fill out the remaining part in here. So I'll go in and say dynamics NAV71 company name. Again, type tap so it will fill it out. And I'll type in Chromos tests. And this time it creates a new company and uh, it will have um, created all the associated SQL tables with it in here. So the command finished. I can now go in and uh, do uh, select company. And I'll have a new Chromos test down here. As I open it the first time in the Rotor client, that's when it will initialize the company same way as it did in uh, 2013. Another very useful command to deal with companies is actually a copy function. And that's really good for building uh, demo databases. So there's a copy nav company. Again, I need to give the server instance. And I give the uh, source company name. It will be Kronos International Limited. Oops. And a destination company name. There will be um, Kronos North America. And then I hit enter. If I don't put in all the parameters in, it will actually ask one at a time. Uh, for them also. So I don't need to know all these commands. And of course, I can get the help on the command. There really is no uh, progress on this command. Um, so, but a small company like the Kronos one only take uh, a few seconds actually to copy. So if I now go and select my companies, I can see I also have a Kronos North America. There was a John I just created uh, by copying the demo company. And this time I have sales orders, I have everything. It took all the data for me and copied to a different one. So this one is uh, some uh, pretty nice uh, commands in here. And of course, uh, there'll be uh, a whole bunch of commands about uh, companies in here. So there's uh, the lead MAV company also. It's called remove. And I'll again give the parameters. So if I want to get rid of my Kronos test that I created, I'll have to put in my server instance. And my company name, and it should be Kronos test. 
and it wants me to confirm. So uh, that's, uh, we'll remove it. And if I go back and look at my companies now, I will see, of course, that uh, my Chromos test company is now gone from the list. So these three new commands, um, new nav company, copy nav company, and remove nav company, used to be the functions that were sitting in the development environment, they now have two commands in there. But this one basically concludes uh, the build that or the install and set up of a complete working uh, system with the Windows clients, the web clients, uh, the online help, and it's now possible to actually go test uh, with this one. You need to install the SQL Management Studio to do a backup of the database, but else it's a fully working test system.